man. What is going on? We are back in black in the building. Shout out to everybody at the Corp Plantation. Roll call. Man, we got a quick, a hot one. A be- man, shout out to everybody out there in Arizona. Shout out to all my peoples in Las Vegas, Nevada, man. Vegas. Vegas expensive as a motherfucker. Anyway, shout out to everybody out there. My siblings, the homegirl Jerrica. Shout out to my brother Dave from No Compromise. Joe in the building. My brother James Young Blood Tex in the building. The homegirl Shawnee Philly. The homegirl Erica. Florida, aka Florida. And the homegirl Melina, North Carolina, aka North Kakalaka. Man, definitely in the building. Man, shout out to everybody out there, man. How's everybody doing? Me, I'm fucked up out here. As long as the system racism still exists, I'm, I'm not doing too well. So shout out to everybody out there, man. We about to get into it, man. We about to talk about the real killers. The real killers. Yes, the real killers. Let's get into it. Yes, 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 yes. Ta-da, ta-da, that type of shit. But yeah, we about to get into it right now, man. I got some audio. I'm about to try to play some audio. The the CEO, Dave Calhoun, testifies before Senate. I don't know if y'all watched that documentary, but in that documentary, talk about how uh, basically, basically, this is what happened. They were building these, these Boeing 757s, but they were using defective products. And basically, that plane crashed because they built a defective plane. So when they had whistleblowers come out and be like, hey, bro, y'all are... Y'all building defective shit and y'all not doing shit right. That CEO and everybody else up under him was like, okay, fire that motherfucker and retaliate against him and we gonna keep production as usual. You know, I watched the um, documentary on Netflix about that too. And in the documentary on Netflix, it was almost the same thing, but with food. It was talking about how all these, these food processing plants, rats, roaches, just eating the food and they still mailing it to people and people are getting sick and somebody died and somebody whistle blew and the ceo ended up doing like 20 years like we're gonna get into it right now and i'm gonna tell you exactly how i feel about it but let's get it let's see if we can get some audio of this clown motherfucker uh testifying let's see let's see because you know they don't they don't like to talk about that okay here we go yeah somebody's basically screaming out like you kill her and then everybody go watch it everybody got pictures of their families up in there no the senate need to send these punk motherfuckers to prison but just listen because it's getting started right now i gotta go get a plug i'll be right back y'all This hearing of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigation will come to order. We welcome our witnesses and my colleagues. And I would like to welcome in particular some of the members of the audience who are here today. Michael Sumo, Nadia Milleran, Adnan Sumo. They are the parents and brother of so what y'all heard, just to just to give y'all a little synopsis, what y'all heard was people yelling in the background because people are like, you're a fucking murderer. This is, look, let me tell y'all something. Don't ever let anybody tell y'all that foundational black Americans are violent. These people, in the words of David from No Compromise, are the masters of confusion. And not only are they the masters of confusion, as Dr. John Henry Clark says, see, now I'm getting on my day for no compromise. Everywhere they go, they tear shit up. You go look that up. It's it's on a video I heard Dr. John Henry Clark say that. And that was the coldest shit I ever heard him say. He said, everywhere they go, y'all tear it up. Everywhere y'all go, y'all find out how y'all can fuck it up and tear it up. Y'all don't care how much money you make. You you, you you don't care if it's detriment of other people. You don't give a fuck. You just, as long as you can make money, as long as you long as you're making money, it doesn't matter at what behest it is. And now you're gonna see that. I'm just gonna play you a little 
sir, sir. Samia Rose Sumo, if you want to stand, you're welcome to with your photographs. Also, here are Chris Moore, Claris Moore, and David Moore, the parents and brother. Now, these are all the people that's in the hearing. But see, I'm going to tell you why I think this is theater. Do something to these fucking CEOs. Stop bringing them before Congress to talk to them, but you're not doing nothing to them. How many people have they brought before Congress, but ain't none of these motherfuckers ever went to prison? These are your senators. These are your congressmen. Why are they even in power if you're not even upholding the law? Why would you keep building an airplane after people are telling, hey, man, this is fucked up. And then all those people fucking die. And now the CEO got to come out there and act like he care. He don't give a fuck about those people that died. Because if he did, you would have listened to the people that were telling you y'all building a fucked up plane. Facts. Of Danielle Moore. Zipporah Curia is here today. She's the daughter of Joseph Curia. Catherine Berté. She is the mother of Camille Berté. Abadu Amiha is also here. His wife, Sarah Gabre yeah, Michael. Yeah, we fast for a little bit. Real human consequences. Life and death results. Not just abstract numbers and hypotheticals, abstract issues. They are a matter of life and death for people who travel by air or work for oh see now it's both well, recounted how he was isolated and transferred for refusing to stay silent about his concerns our investigation thank you so they silenced him and this is the diabolical evil shaitanic thing these people do like, man, don't put nothing past these people. If somebody is telling you, hey, man, this plane is fucked up, like it's really fucked up and this could cause a big thing. Why would you transfer a motherfucker? Because the bottom line is money on the line. So fuck it. We didn't already paid all this money. Put that motherfucker out here. That's the same thing that CEO did in that health food documentary on Netflix, Netflix, where a whistleblower was like, bro. Is rats, roaches breaking into these fucking factory plants, food plants, and you're still shipping it out to people. People are going to get sick. And it started off with Jack in a Box. And J Jack in a Box is the main motherfucker. It, somebody ate like a burger or something from there and the kid ended up having, ended up getting Bill Paul. It, that kid was so fucked up after eating that shit. That really made me rethink, like, damn, what the fuck is going on? Why are we doing it? It was in Washington. These The, the parent and the kid lived in Washington. And this shit was, like, in, in the 90s. And then they kind of, like, settled. But the documentary is out of line, the shit that they're exposing. So we have to understand how diabolical the dominant society can be. ...has proceeded since we first heard from him. And we have heard from many others. We have more than a dozen whistleblowers by this point and we encourage more to come forward but why should we come forward when you are allowing these fortune 500 companies to transfer people and do shit that is unethical because they're trying to save lives why would y'all do that why y'all not firing these ceos why y'all not saying okay if people start coming out and we find out we do an investigation that y'all transferring people y'all you're going to prison what do you think is going to happen? Them CEOs are going to be all over the people under them like, hey, if something's fucked up, y'all better come tell us. Don't be transferring people and treating people, fuck up, people fucked up because this shit going to be on me. See, nothing's on the heads of these CEOs. That's why they do what they do. And then they get paid a nice salary to leave. That's why. We've collected that evidence. We've learned that Boeing's problems go deeper than one whistleblower or one incident or one line of aircraft. A mechanic in South Carolina told us about how when he and his colleagues raised concerns about directives to not follow policies and procedures, quote, we were ordered to just do it and told there were hundreds of others waiting in line outside the gate. Sound like a job they will all us be working at, huh? Wanting our jobs. Another whistleblower from Washington State 
has brought us new evidence. Very recently, a Boeing employee, Sam Mohawk, quality assurance inspector in Renton, Washington, informed us that Boeing is improperly documenting, I'm quoting, non-conforming parts, possibly using them and installing them in airplanes. There are parts that are damaged or defective, out of specification. He said that he's been told by his superiors to conceal this evidence from the FAA and that he is being retaliated against. In fact, he's been threatened with termination. These are chilling allegations. They echo concerns raised by others, like John Barnett, who made similar claims about practices at Boeing 787 manufacturing plant in South Carolina, and by Merle Myers, who came forward last month with additional related claims about a different plant in Washington. This new evidence is detailed in a memorandum that I shared with my colleagues, PSI members, earlier today. Without objection, I'd like to ask that this memorandum be entered into the record. Mr. Calhoun, you were brought now, this is theater. This is the theater that me and David from No Compromise and James Jumbla talked about about, I think, a year or two years ago. We did a Twitter space. Or I think we did IG. David, you got to help me remember. But it was me, you, and James Blood. And we was talking about, because remember, I kept asking y'all, explain to us theater. Explain to us why, why do we like this stuff? And I remember David from No Compromise was like, y'all need to go check him out, by the way, too. Stop front and, and get a painting, too. Uh, recycle those, do those dollars. But... I remember I asked David, I was like, hey, bro, like, why do we like that type of shit? Like, why? Like, even me, like, why do we? He was like, Warren G, we're, we're addicted to the, the drama, the theater. We need the theater. We need that. That's what we need. And I had to kind of check myself, too. Like, damn, this nigga's not, not lying because, like, that's why theater gets more clicks than anything else when it's just kind of like cut and dry and ain't gonna get no clicks but when it's like theater involved and all that you want to watch it you want to overindulge in it so this is the theater that me and david this is more what david was talking about because i'm the one who asked him the question of why he's like we we addicted to that shit now just just listen to what they're talking about you know you notice he ain't gonna go in like you know what you probably should be in prison you guys cost people families their lives money can't repay them back you know, this isn't a theater show and we are going to sentence you to prison because you're the CEO. That's what comes along with the, hey, heavy as the head that roars the crown. I guarantee you if CEOs start going to prison, they'll stop taking those jobs. And to the company as CEO, you had been on the board to turn this company around. You and your board of directors have a duty to your shareholders, but they will be deeply ill-served if you fail to correct course to confront the root cause of this broken safety culture. You have a duty to demand the highest safety standards and insist that every installation is properly documented and ensure that speak up means, in fact, speak up, not shut up, as it is meant all too often. Boeing needs to stop thinking about the next earning call and start thinking about the next. Then put his bald head ass in fucking prison. They're not listening to you. Man, that man is just there because he got to be there. I guarantee you if a motherfucker was facing prison time, going to jail, that motherfucker would be like, uh-uh. I'm throwing everybody under the bus. Then he'll stop doing it. Then the next CEO going to be like, oh, shit. Let me make sure I'm on. Ain't no trips to Barbados and taking the family out on the company dime. Your ass is to be more on top of the shit. That's what a real CEO will be doing. Like, uh-uh. Going around asking questions. What's going on? No, tell me what's going on. Having conversations with other departments to know. No, because these motherfuckers too busy getting paid and sending their kids, kids, kids to college. That's all it is. CEO ain't nothing but a hustle. That's another hustle before the dominant society. That's another faction of the system of racism and white supremacy. Basically, government assistance. That's what it is. Generation. 
We're here because we want Boeing to succeed. Boeing needs to succeed for the sake of the jobs it provides, for the sake of local economies it supports, for the sake of the American traveling public, for the sake of our military. It's not enough for Boeing to shrug its shoulders and say, well, mistakes happen. This is not an industry where it's okay to cut corners, to reduce inspections, to take shortcuts, and rely on broken parts that happen to be sitting around. This is not an industry where it's okay to rush planes out the door because you need to meet. But they're doing it. So what do you plan on doing about it? A quarterly sale and an opportunity to change a broken safety culture. With that, I turn to the ranking member. Hey, Mr. Chairman, uh, to avoid repeating much of what you said, I'll just ask my written opening statement be entered in the record. We don't want Regulating to the airline industry and the airline manufacturers to make sure that they have a perfect record. That's what we're, we're talking about. You need perfection. Did not tell you it was theater. Why don't they fucking give him prison time? You kill, you're a murderer. You kill people. Knowingly, you're a murderer. Sorry. They've got him in hand, and they're doing everything they can to fix those problems. So, again, appreciate the hearing. Of Mr. Calhoun, thank you for coming here. Um, thank him for coming. But his company put all those people's lives in jeopardy, knowing that they were fucking basically putting fix a flat on a damn airplane. And now those people are dead. And you talking about, thank you for coming. No, you should be like, uh, you need to go to prison. Then y'all, and then let this be a lesson to all you other CEOs. We coming for y'all too. So y'all motherfuckers out here on this bullshit, your ass is going to prison too. You'd be asked some tough questions here. Uh, I appreciate the phone conversation we had and you know. So that means y'all already talked. You see how the, look, this is what the dominant side, it, this is a class system now. Okay, well, we're all white, but yeah, we don't really give a fuck about the people that died on the plane. Because at the end of the day, this is billions and billions of dollars at stake. And uh, we'll put on a public theater show for the dumb society, the commoner. But uh, you can kind of go back to doing what the fuck you've been doing. We're in here for, so. We're focused on safety. Safety is Hold on, let's see. Because they not, yeah, because now now they don't want to play the shit. That's why I was like, man, get to it. Clear. Our culture is far from perfect. But we are taking action and we are making progress. Then why are you not in prison? We understand the gravity. And we're committed to moving forward with transparency and accountability while elevating employee engagement every step of the way. Our airplanes have carried the equivalent of more than double the population of the planet. Getting this right is critical for our company. It's critical for our customers who fly our planes every day. And it Then why were those people that were whistleblowing transferred, moved, and told to shut the fuck up if that's what you're striving for? Stop. Critical for our country. We're part of a global ecosystem composed of manufacturers, suppliers, Airlines, airports, air traffic controllers, and regulators. And they're all committed to learning from every incident. It is this relentless focus on improvement that has led to our industry's unparalleled safety record. And it is with this mindset we're taking comprehensive action to strengthen safety and quality. And we know, as America's premier aerospace manufacturer, this is what you and the flying public have every right to expect from us. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Howard and I are, will, will be happy to take your questions. Thank you, Mr. Calhoun. Uh, we will have seven minute rounds, I'll begin. Mr. Calhoun, uh, more than five years after the MAX crashes, you're once again making promises and seeming commitments. They seem highly aspira aspirational. They are very general to correct course. Do you think Boeing has done enough to date to make those kinds of corrections? 
And what would you say to the whistleblowers who have come forward and faced retaliation? Senator, um, they should get their jobs back with some monies on top of that because they did the right thing and said, hey, man, you building these planes fucked up. One of my family members could potentially be on this plane. That's one. And two, it should come out of your budget. You're the CEO, so you should have to pay all those people back for all that retaliation that they had to face for saving people's lives and doing the right thing. Stop. Thank you for the question. Uh, I ask myself that question every day. Have we done enough? You hear this? I ask myself that question. Boy, the time, they some cold motherfuckers, man, for real. Uh, I remind everyone the findings and the accidents. And we all participated in the investigative work. We saw the conclusions by virtue of the NTSB reports and the local uh, 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 regulators' reports. These issues were attributed to the development of the airplane and a software package referred to as MCAS. Y'all got to go watch this on, I think, Netflix. Man, they did a terrible job. He up here trying to clean it up, but they did a terrible job. They basically put fix a flat on a plane that was defective, and then it ended up crashing. And there we took responsibility for that error. You, so you accept that Boeing was responsible for those crashes in 346 I deaths. accept that MCAS and Boeing are responsible for those crashes. But yes, sir. Then why are you not in prison? Has enough been done to date yeah. already? So this is, this, this is the answer to that question. The development process for an airplane starts with an engineering effort. So the engineers were the ones telling y'all. Oh, my. Here we go. Why explain it? We have revamped our engineering effort at large. We have created a series of design practices, including a new one referred to as human factors. It speaks directly to the work that needed to be done to prevent MCAS from creating the environment that, faced, that those pilots faced at that moment. So we did that. We established a safety management system. We learned from the FAA and from our airline customers what it was and how to implement it. We've been listening to it. We tune that safety management system into every airplane that flies every second of every day well, so that we more, could learn from those airplanes. Let me be more specific, and I apologize Please. for interrupting, but we're limited in terms of time. Boeing has a code of conduct that states, and I quote, I will never retaliate against or punish anyone who speaks up to report a concern, end quote. And yet... The whistleblowers that we have heard, including testifying before this committee, have reported a host of retaliatory behaviors from reassignment to exclusion from key meeting to being sidelined and sidetracked in their careers, verbal harassment and threats, and even physical violence. After whistleblower John Barnett raised his concerns about missing parts he reported that his supervisor called him 19 times in one day and 21 times another day. And when Barnett asked his supervisor about those calls, he was told, quote, I'm going to push you until you break. See? He broke. So that's what they do at corporate America. And corporate America is getting most of their funding from the government, from black taxpayers. Not immigrants. So remember that. When whistleblower Sam Mohawk raised concerns about Boeing's concealment, concealment of non-conforming parts, he was put in charge of completing correct, corrective action investigation with an impossible deadline and then threatened with formal discipline, including firing. He couldn't meet that deadline. When I hear about these experiences, uh, I wonder whether Boeing really wants change. How can you reassure us that Boeing is going to, in fact, end this broken safety culture? Good question. Babble. Senator, um, I'm going to start by uh, assuring you that I listened to the whistleblowers that appeared at your hearing. Um, something went wrong. And I know this is... Y'all had defective parts 
and the engineers on the plane and the design team and everybody got together and was like, hey, these parts are fucked up and it's not going to work. These parts are fucked up and it's not going to work. These parts are fucked up and it's not going to work. Them motherfuckers was like, put that shit on there anyway. Who gives a damn? It ain't, a, it ain't our family flying on that damn plane. That's exactly how they felt. Charity of their remarks. Well, let me, let me ask you a more and specific then, And then with respect to our company, we do have a policy. I often, often cite and reward the people who bring issues forward, even if they have huge consequences. Yeah, but we're not talking about what you're doing. We're talking about what the company did when people were telling them that the parts were defective and y'all didn't do anything about it, but treat the staff like shit like y'all do in corporate America and then tell them to get the fuck on and keep building the fucked up plane. That's what y'all did. So what you should just basically be saying is, you know what? I apologize on that. And we dropped the ball. And our job the next time is to not only not drop the ball, Start disciplining the people that are silencing the people that are doing the work. On our company and our production levels, etc. My leadership team does that. We survey our people with respect to do they feel empowered to, to speak up. That survey performance gets better and better. It's never perfect. We work hard to reach out to our people. Immediately following Alaska, we had a stand down. The stand downs continue and they rotate and we listen to everybody. I'm trying to deal with 30,000 ideas on how we can move forward. How do we make their jobs easier? How do we train them more effectively? How do we do that? Our team uh, let me, is let me we ask are working you, Mr. hard Mr. to Mr. Calhoun, let me ask yes. you, how many <laughs> of your employees have been fired for retaliating against whistleblowers? Um, Senator, I don't have that number on the uh -huh. table, but I know it, I know it happened. See? This is what y'all need to look at. Not only did we kill all those people because the plane was fucked up, we fired the motherfuckers who tried to warn us. Now, what type of psychopathic person is that? That's why Dr. John Henry Clark, which Dave from No Combines put me on him, that nigga's a genius, and I don't care what y'all niggas talking about. I don't want to hear... I don't want to hear nobody ever say that Dr. John Henry Clark ain't no genius. That man is a genius. He said it right. Everywhere y'all go, y'all tear shit up. Look what y'all did. Y'all controlling the plant industry. This is the most dangerous, ferocious industry ever because it's not no car where you can jump out or you can stop. You, you can't hit the brakes on no fucking plane. You in the air. And y'all up here playing with people's lives. That's like when... that's that's. That's like when they had all those problems with Toyota, with the brake wouldn't stop. So whoever was at Toyota, they knew they was making defective parts. They just didn't give a fuck. That's why they call it a recall now, right? But how could a plane have a recall? It's in the air. Have I know it firing? happens. I am happy to follow up and get you that number. I would appreciate yes. your following up. Let me ask you, have any of your supervisors, your managers, anybody been fired for retaliating against people who speak truth to power about defects or problems in production? Senator, we have fired people and disciplined people, and I am happy to follow up with what who you have need. Who have you fired with, without, and how have they been without, disciplined? Without, I'm not, I can't, uh, I have concern on privacy, and as you know, every one of those cases. But will you come back to this committee and tell us? I will us. most certainly get back to you, sir. Let me ask you, uh -huh. uh, have you been aware of how Boeing has complied with requests for information from this committee? Probably not by line item. No, sir. Well, let me show you a sample of the data produced by Boeing in response to requests by this committee. Uh-huh. I'll show you... Uh, a bigger display, uh -huh. and the details have been provided to you. Are you able to make sense of this? No, stuff? sir. Complete gobbledygook. Yes, sir. This is what Boeing has provided to this committee in response to our request for information. Can you justify these productions? I will. Uh, I would describe it 
precisely as you did, and I can't justify. And I am I will most definitely follow up. Uh huh. My time has expired on this first round. That's all I'm gonna play, y'all. That's it. I would have went way over my time, but I wanted y'all. You like, damn, why is one? Because y'all need to see. This is bigger than Buff Daddy and all this other sucker shit that's going on. And Cassie and all. We up here talking about Cassie. Buffy is alive. Cassie is alive. Let's talk about the people that have not survived the bad boy industry. That's what we should be talking about. Look, at no diss to Cassie or nothing like that, but it's like everybody's going to go along with it when they're getting paid. Then when she not getting paid, well, yeah, you didn't you didn't sue him criminally because you wanted money. You didn't want him to go to jail because you need him to get the you need the money. So that that's not even important. You like Warren? Why would you say that? Because people died in that plane because of fix a flap, just throwing slapstick, throwing anything together. You got staff and other people that are engineers coming to you on several occasions, going up their hierarchy of, hey man, this shit is defective. This shit is defective. Then the shit fucking fall out of air and plane crash and all these people die now everybody like oh my god what happened y'all better start paying attention to this don't let these people people fool you just like they got david fauci on there don't nobody want to hear from no goddamn david fauci david fauci is an actor and that's all i'm gonna say and you notice it ain't no more jabby jab they ain't even talk about that shit no more so that's uh, that's done and just to let you know joe biden he know he ain't gonna win yet again stop Left wing, right wing, one bird shitting on your motherfucking head. That's a that's a fact. So you need to look at this. I think a lot of times we don't pay attention. You see your boy Justin Timberlake got a DUI too. They got that motherfucker plastered all over CNN. You damn right. Plastering his punk ass all over the goddamn Jumbotron. Fuck him. Shit. That's what he get. It's time for us to start paying attention to the shit that matters. That's it. The real killers is Boeing. The real killers are Joe Biden and them in the 94 crime bill. That's the real motherfuckers that's doing the dirt. Not no damn Puff Daddy and, 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 and all these other sucker motherfuckers that they want to put put in front of you and have you mad at them while they're in the, in the background. That's why I'm like, something else is going on because why they keep talking about Puff? They keep talking, now they ain't talking about Puff no more because, oh shit, Boeing, now this man got to go testify. Yeah, he got to testify. Man, you responsible for how many deaths? You know they was putting defective parts on a fucking 757 plane that has to ha that has to adhere to the stock shareholders. This is about money, ladies and gentlemen, not nothing else. So they will put money above everything. They don't give a fuck about niggas dying. We the commoner to them. Why do you think they like? Oh, y'all don't want to vote? Well, we don't give a fuck if y'all vote as long as we keep doing what the fuck we doing. That's why. Interest rates are up. Housing prices are up. It's like, well, damn. Did y'all get the fucking... Did somebody get the goddamn memo that black folk were trying to buy houses? Because <laughs> I could have swore 10, 15, 20 years ago, I'm not saying black folks wasn't trying to buy houses, but I don't think it is as important as it is now. Ownership, entrepreneurialism, all that stuff. Now that's at an all-time high. That information is everywhere. If you meet anybody and they ain't read Dr. Claude Anderson's Black Lady White Wealth and Paranomics, just don't even talk to them just recommend them the book don't even talk to them because i remember like i said i was having a conversation with a beautiful intelligent sister and i had to ask her have you read black Larry white wealth by dr claude anderson she was like no i don't know this I, I i didn't even i just didn't even want to carry on the conversation after that because you have no idea what's going on in the united states of america incorporated and what has been done to foundational black americans and what is owed to us and i don't want to hear no sucker shit about all the native americans and the immigrants and all this other stuff stop if that's the case then they would have had mexicans and immigrants over here building the country and not foundational black americans i'm done guilty nigga peace